All right. Um, so looking at this problem, I have 2 secant square root of x plus tangent square root of x minus 3 equals 0. And the problem we're trying to solve for this is we have exactly two different you know, functions, right? We have, um, we have secant and tangent. However, secant and tangent are like brother and sister, right? They're, they work in our Pythagorean identities. When we have tangent squared and secant squared, we know we relate to each other. So what we're going to want to do is we're either going to want to solve for tangent or solve for secant. It doesn't really matter which way you want to look at it. We know that Pythagorean identity that we wrote is tangent squared of x plus 1 equals the secant squared of x. So we just need to determine you know, which one do we want to solve for and, and really to work with. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert my tangent to secant. I don't know. It's just because of what I want to do. Because I'd rather solve for my tangent rather than solving for a secant. So tangent squared of x equals secant squared of x minus 1. You could solve for, you could convert these all to secants, though, if you'd like to, and solve it that way. So therefore, now I have 2 times secant squared of x plus, instead of writing tangent squared, I'm going to write secant squared of x minus 1 minus 3 equals 0. So do you guys see what I did to convert that over? So you just rewrite them all in. Now I have them all in the same term. And now when I rewrite my problem, I can now write 3 secant squared of x minus 4 equals 0. Right? So now you can combine your like terms. You combine the secant values. What did I do? Oh, I guess I was saying I want to, never mind. I guess I want to convert my secants, which I changed. So now I just want to solve for my secant, which is perfectly fine. So I have 3 secant squared of x minus 4. So we'll do it this way rather than doing the tangent, which way I wanted to do, but whatever. So I add 4. Then I have 3 secant squared of x equals 4 divided by 3. Secant squared of x equals 4 over 3. Square root, square root, secant squared of x equals plus or minus 2 over square root of 3. Yes, thank you. OK, now before going to rationalize the denominator, the reason why I didn't want to use secant and I wanted to use tangent um, is because some, you know, tangent I can represent on the unit circle as y over x. Sometimes it's a little bit harder representing cos cosine because that's now going to be 1 over x. However, if I recognize that this is secant, I know the reciprocal, which will be cosine of x, is going to equal plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. And did this have a constraint? This had constraints on it, right? This is the last homework. So we need to make sure we solve on the constraint of 0 and 2 pi. So now all I'm going to do is simply create my right triangle and determine you know, where, what are all the values when I'm going to have an x value of square root of 3 over 2. So my first angle is going to be pi over 6. Next angle would be 5 pi over 6. Yes. Next angle, 7 pi over 6. And the last angle is going to be 11 pi over 6. So therefore, I can say x equals pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. Cool? Okay. Could solve that. You could have done that for tangent or cosine or tangent.